You've heard it more than you could possibly know. Wrong him on the like a wagon wheel. Wrong him on any way you feel. Forever young, I wanna be forever young. You done done me and you bet I felt it. You tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. Is it an amazingly useful tool for expressing emotion in a song? Or is it an overused, trite, derivative gimmick that should just be dispensed with? Whatever the case, I am not the first person to notice this pattern. People killing, people dying, children hurt, and you hear them crying. See the stone set in her eye, see the thorn twist in her <laughs> I'm all out of faith, this is how I feel, I'm calling I insane, lying naked on the floor. See you driving around town with the girl I love, and I'm like, forget you. I come from a land down, land down. In the music world, the prevalence of the 1564 chord progression is so well known that it's basically a meme. Let's talk about it. What's up, guys? My name is Connor and. I have a hole in my shirt. Today we're gonna to be talking about perhaps the most common chord progression in all of modern music. What you just heard over and over and over again is the one, five, six, four chord progression. First, we have to understand what these random numbers I'm throwing at you actually mean. What I'm referring to is something in music called Roman numeral analysis, or in more modern terms, the Nashville number system. This is basically a system for musicians to understand how chords function within a song, regardless of what key the song is played in. So without getting too much into the technical weeds, Let's start with the major scale. We'll use the C major scale because it's all white keys. So a lot of people can identify the notes in the scale through something called solfege, which you're probably familiar with. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. For simplicity's sake and to make this an easy system, we'll instead refer to the notes by their numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So the idea with these chord numbers is that the chords are each built on a note from the scale, what we call the root note. To construct these chords, all you have to do is start on a note. In this case, we'll use C. You play the first note, you skip the second note in the scale, you play the third note, you skip the fourth note in the scale, and then you play the fifth note. We play all those notes together and you have a C major. Because the C major starts on C, which is the first note in the C major scale, we call that the one chord. The two chord we would construct the same way, starting on D, which is the second note in the scale. Play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note, and we get the D chord, this time minor. It's just the way the math works out. Starting on the third note, E, you get E minor. Four would be F, five would be G, six would be A minor, and seven is B diminished. You'll notice it sounds a little dissonant and kind of odd compared to the other ones. We're not going to talk much about it right now. We're just going to focus on one through six. So when I say the one, five, six, four chord progression, those chords are what I'm referring to. If I play them in that order, it sounds like this. And every single one of those songs that I sang earlier will work over this progression. Now, 1564 is just a bunch of numbers. It's hard to remember. It's not super flashy. I am of the personal belief that chord progressions need a rebrand. So because this is my video and I get to do what I want, we're going to call this the simple adventure progression. We start on the one chord. That's home base. That just feels like you're chilling at home, having a good time. Nothing's really happening. After that, you go to the five. Suddenly, we've got some movement. We're going somewhere. There's some action unfolding. After the five, we go to the six. Our first minor chord. Feels pretty resolved, but there's a sadness to it. Minor chords tend to sound a little more sad or melancholy. After that six chord, we go to the four chord. The four chord, I like to think of it as having sort of a question mark on it. It's like, all right, this is a definitive statement, but is this? So the progression one, five, six, four concludes with that four chord question mark. And then when you loop it back around to the beginning, your question is answered with another one chord at the beginning of the progression. Now past that, I don't really know why it sounds so good. This is one of those things where you get out of the territory of music theory and start delving into philosophy a little bit. Why does the human ear pick up these sounds and hear them as harmonious, consonant, beautiful? It's a very complex question, and I don't know if anybody really knows the answer. If you figured it out, leave a comment down below, and I'll be following up with you about other secrets of the universe. But it sounds great, and it's incredibly versatile. You can use it in a ballad. You could use it to write a rock song. You could use it in an upbeat pop song. It's been used a million ways, and most of them work. So this begs the question, is this a tool in the musician's toolkit or is it a crutch? Is it just defaulting to the simplest possible option for a chord progression? I mean, 
I personally think it can be both. Let's say you're a songwriter and every single song you write is just centered around the 1564 progression. You're gonna hit a ceiling with what you're able to accomplish. Now, the thing is, sometimes these constraints can work. There's only so many chords that sound good together. It's like if you told a painter to only use blue paint. Yeah, that's going to limit what they can create, but within the confines of those limitations, they might be able to do some really cool things. Now, if you are going to commonly and consistently default to this chord progression, what you will want to do is write in different tempos, with different instrumentation, different lyrical themes, different melodies. You'll want to change other parameters so that you're not just recycling the same song over and over again. Now here's the thing about the 1-5-6-4 progression. As is, it sounds wonderful. However, you can squeeze even more juice out of it by changing the chord that you start on. You can rotate the starting chord to create a completely different emotional landscape, even though it's the same four chords in the same order. My personal favorite of all the rotations is the one that starts with six, the 6-4-1-5 chord progression. If the 1564 progression is the most commonly used progression in music, the 6415 is probably second. Now, I will admit, I'm a little basic. This is my favorite chord progression. It's probably throughout my songwriting career the one that I've overused the most. I've probably used this progression more than any other. But because you're starting with the minor chord, the question chord, the four chord, comes second. The happy, confident home bass chord, the one chord, is third. And then the adventure peak of the action chord, the five chord, is last. The emotional landscape is completely different. Check this out. Here's an example of one five five, six, four. And here's an example of six, four, one, five. Same chords and the same order, but completely different outcomes. So you can think about this chord progression as the minor version of the 1564. But this one, funnily enough, kinda does have a name. It was dubbed the Sensitive Female Chord Progression by Mark Hirsch, a music journalist that was writing for the Boston Globe. In his article about it, he referenced songs like One of Us by Joan Osborne. What if God was one of us? And Building a Mystery by Sarah McLachlan. You live in a church. Where you sleep with voodoo dolls And look, Mark, I don't want to knock you or the work you did. I just personally think that sensitive female chord progression is a little condescending. Once again, this is my channel. I can do what I want, so we're going to give it a little bit of a rebrand. We're going to call it the Heartbreak and Redemption chord progression. Because to me, that six chord into the four chord kind of reflects that aching, visceral heartbreak feeling that I'm sure we've all experienced at one time or another. If you haven't, Count yourself lucky. But then the one to five at the end gives it kind of a hopeful twist, making sure the progression isn't just too depressing or dark. Heartbreak on the front end, redemption on the back end. Heartbreak and redemption. Now once again, we can come up with a zillion songs that use this progression. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and kicking me out. I believe the world is burning to the ground. I guess we're gonna find out It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you so that right there is two of the rotations of the 1-5-6-4 chord progression. You've got the original progression starting on the 1, then you've got the version rotated halfway through starting on the 6. Well, what about the other two? Well, the next one is the 4-1-5-6. We're gonna dub this progression the You Won't Like the Answer progression. The 4 to the 1 kind of sounds like a question. The five landing on the six ends the progression with a minor chord, maybe implying that the answer to the question isn't what we want. Again, we can find tons of songs that use this progression. Although, to be fair, fewer than the simple adventure progression or the heartbreak and redemption progression. But this is a progression that's very common in worship music. Our God is an awesome God he reigns from heaven above. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. It's also a favorite of a handful of pop artists, most notably Taylor Swift. Now we got bad blood. You know it used to be man love. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. 
together. And then of course there's tons of other miscellaneous songs that feature this progression heavily. If everyone cared and nobody cried, if everyone loved and nobody lied. And then the final rotation of the 1-5-6-4 progression, the simple adventure progression, that we haven't yet talked about is 5-6-4-1. We'll call this the solving the problem progression. 5 in the 6 feels a little unstable, shaky, has a minor chord, and creates a tiny bit of a sense of unease. The 4 chord following those 2 chords asks the question, how do we solve this? And then the 1 chord at the very end answers that question in a very confident, positive sounding way. Solving the problem. So that progression will sound like this. So, here's the thing about this progression. I personally love it. However, I really struggled to find songs that actually use it. Despite being a rotation of the two most used chord progressions in pop music, this one's actually remarkably rare. After combing through a ton of different hit songs looking for it, the only ones that I could think of that use it are Love and Memories by OAR. <laughs> Wanna Be by the Spice Girls. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. And Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer. Waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. I found a couple other songs that get close, but aren't quite there. Like Time After Time, for example. Time After Time does have that progression, but instead of 5, 6, 4, 1, it goes 5, 6, and then 4 quickly into 5 again before it goes to 1. If you lost, you can look and you will find me. Time after time. And then there are a couple songs out there like Ocean Avenue by Yellow Card, one of my all-time favorites. This one does do 5-6-4, but it just stays on the 4 chord afterwards. It doesn't go to the 1. If I could find you now, things would get better. I'm sure I'm missing some, so if you can think of any other songs that use the solving the problem progression, let me know in the comments. I'd like to add them to a running list. So those are the four rotations of that original 1-5-6-4 chord progression. However, because these are the four most usable, common, popular chords in pop music, you can really shuffle these in whatever order you want. Here's 6-1-4-5. One, six, five, four. They're all good. They're all usable. So one more thing worth noting about all this is something that I touched on earlier. People often tend to look at the different rotations of the 1-5-6-4 progression, the simple adventure progression, as all being the same progression. Personally, I don't think that's fair. I think every single one of the four rotations has a completely different emotional context and landscape depending on the starting chord. And I'm going to attempt to prove that right now. I am about to write a song using all four of these progressions. In the verse, I'm going to use the simple adventure progression, the 1-5-6-4. The pre-chorus is going to be the you won't like the answer progression, 4-1-5-6. The chorus will have a little bit of heartbreak, a little bit of redemption, 6-4-1-5. And the bridge is going to use that ever-elusive solving the problem progression, 5-6-4-1. Additionally, I am picking the topic based on a random word generator. I ran it to generate two words and got function and press. So the topic of the song has to be some combination of those two words. And the other rule I'm giving myself is in the actual lyrics of the song, I have to use the names of all of the chord progressions. Somewhere in the song lyrics, I have to say simple adventure, heartbreak and redemption, you won't like the answer, and solving the problem. And with that, here's the song. Tell me down below in the comments how you think I did. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. I could save the world no matter what I do They won't change their mind But deep, deep down I got something to prove I'm gonna break their stride I'm on a simple adventure with a singular goal I'm gonna get their attention Gonna make them know that I'm the first in line no snub in my grind this time But I find No letter of recognition, no text or call No invitation in the mail So I'm solving the problem You're gonna see me pull up at the function Bell of the ball glass, slippers in my pumpkin You're gonna see me roll up with the gunship Lower the press I'm coming you might be wondering if you have a snowball's chance And you're afraid to ask 
know that's a rational fear And you won't like the answer, I can promise you that They never give it away, it's something you gotta take The biggest social claim you could ever stake And I'm staking mine I'm knocking my guy this time question of the commitment hasn't been resolved No invitation in the mail, so I'm solving the problem You're gonna see me fall up at the function Bell of the ball, glass slippers in my pumpkin You're gonna see me roll up with the gunship Dressed to the T with the pocket full of gumption You're gonna see me fall up at the function Kicking down the door, coming in, no discussion You're gonna see me fall up at the function It's the classic tale of heartbreak and redemption I wasn't born to feel, won't tuck my tail, won't stall the engine Still no letter of recognition, no text to call, no invitation in the mail, so I'm Well, <laughs> you'll see You're gonna see me pull up at the function Bell of the ball, glass slippers in my pumpkin You're gonna see me roll up the gun ship, dressed to the T with the pocket full of gumption. Gonna see me pull up at the function, kicking down the door, coming in, no discussion. Gonna see me pull up.